We're doing workbook page 595 and 596 and 601 and 602 today in our meeting, or sorry, in our Zoom. So on 595, it says, look at the Venn diagram above. Can a right triangle ever be e an equilateral triangle? Explain. So if we look, we're looking at a right triangle and an equilateral triangle. So here's a right triangle and here's an equilateral triangle. Can a right triangle ever be an equilateral? No, they, do, they don't overlap. A right triangle will never be an equilateral triangle. No, a right triangle will never be an equilateral triangle. There circles do not overlap. All right, on page six, uh, 596, it says look at the Venn diagram on the previous page. Write a statement about the relationship between acute and isosceles triangles. So we're gonna go back to the diagram and we're gonna look at acute and isosceles. So here's acute. And here's isosceles. So some acute triangles are isosceles, but not all of isosceles triangles are acute because isosceles also could be obtuse and it could also be right because the isosceles circle overlaps obtuse and right. So some acute triangles are isosceles, but not all acute tri not all isosceles triangles are acute. Some acute triangles are isosceles triangles, but not all isosceles, forgot the C there, triangles. are acute. Look at the Venn diagram on the previous page. Write a statement about the relationship between acute and equilateral triangles. So now we're looking at acute and equilateral. Here's acute and here's equilateral. Not all acute triangles are equilateral because we just said some of them are isosceles, but all equilateral triangles are acute because this equilateral triangle is completely inside the acute circle. So all equilateral triangles are acute, but not all acute triangles are equilateral. All equilateral triangles are acute but not all acute triangles are equilateral. Draw a Venn diagram in the space below to show the relationship among the categories of isosceles, scalene, and equilaterals within the border of the category triangles. So we're using these terms here to draw a Venn diagram, and it's all going to go within triangles. So we just said that, or if we look at the previous page actually, we see that equilateral triangles are inside of isosceles triangles. Now scalene triangles aren't anywhere on here, but scalene triangles means no sides are the same length. Isosceles means two sides the same length and equilateral means three. If it's got three sides the same length, then it's also got two sides the same length. That's why equilateral is inside the isosceles circle. So we can do the same thing on our Venn diagram. We would put the equilateral circle lateral, inside the isosceles circle because all equilateral triangles are isosceles. Since scalene has no 
sides the same length, the scalene would be off by itself. Determine whether each statement is true or false. Draw a picture to help if needed. A scalene triangle is never isosceles. Well, we have this picture right here. They are not touching, so that is true. Scalene triangles are never isosceles. A right triangle is sometimes equilateral. Well, let's look over here. Can a right triangle sometimes be equilateral? Are those two circles overlapping at all? No, they're not overlapping at all. So that's false because a right triangle is not sometimes an equilateral triangle. A right triangle is never isosceles. Let's look. A right triangle is never isosceles. Are the right triangle and the isosceles triangle circles, are those overlapping? They overlap right here. So sometimes a right triangle is an isosceles triangle. So this is false because this says that they're never isosceles and we know that sometimes they are. And finally, a scalene triangle can be right obtuse or acute. So that's not on any of our um, pictures. It's not on the Venn diagram on 595 and it's not on this Venn diagram here. We did talk about this, I believe, in a Zoom meeting last week. But a scalene triangle can be right obtuse or acute. That is true. Most oftentimes we see it as obtuse, but you can draw a scalene that's both right, acute, or obtuse. Alright, you're going to tear that page out. You can wait if you want to until test date. But we're also going to do 601 and 602. So if you turn over to page 601, the first question says, look at the tree diagram above. Write a statement about the relationship between rhombuses and squares. So in our tree diagram, we have rhombuses and squares. So all squares are rhombuses, but not all rhombuses are squares. All squares are rhombuses, but not all Rhombuses are squares. Oops. Because the square comes after the rhombus, it shares all the proper properties with whatever comes before it. All right. On page 602, look at the tree diagram on the previous page. Can a rhombus ever be a rectangle explained? Here we go. A rhombus and it can ever be a rectangle? Are those connected? No, they are not. A rhombus can never be a rectangle because rectangles have four right angles and rhombuses do not. A rhombus can never be a rectangle because Rectangles have four right angles and four equal sides. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Because rectangles have four right angles and rhombuses are the ones that have four equal sides and rhombuses have four equal sides. Draw a tree diagram to show the relationship among the following categories. Polygons, pentagons, quadrilaterals, parallelograms, trapezoids, rectangles, and squares. Use the inclusive definition of trapezoid, a quadrilateral with at least one pair of parallel sides. We talked about this previously in another meeting. This is the definition that Ms. Bridges disagrees with. Because Ms. Bridges says that a quadrilateral, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with only 
one pair of parallel sides. So if I were to look at the answer key to this tree diagram, and what I'm actually going to draw is going to be different because me and this book disagree, but that's okay. We should know that all of the things listed here are quadrilaterals. So that is, oh, actually, I take that back. All of the things listed here are polygons. All of the things are polygons. They're all shapes with closed figures. So polygons should go at the top of our tree diagram. I'm going to cross that off because we used it. We do have several things that are quadrilaterals on this page, but pentagons are not quadrilaterals. Pentagons have five sides, quadrilaterals have four. So our polygon has to split, and we need to put pentagons on one side and quadrilaterals on the other. Now, here's where Miss Bridges and the book disagree. Miss Bridges is going to split quadrilaterals, and we're going to put trapezoid on one side. And we're going to put parallelogram on the other. The book would put the book would put um, trapezoid here and parallelogram after it. That's what the book's answer key says. But I say that the trapezoid has exactly one and they say it has at least one so we disagree there so after parallelogram is going to come rectangle rectangle and then after rectangle is going to come square square has all the properties of a rectangle of a parallelogram of a quadrilateral and of a polygon you have all the properties of whatever comes before you not whatever comes after you Number four, how would your cheat diagram in the previous problem be different if you use, okay. How would your tree diagram in the previous problem be different if you use the exclusive definition for trapezoid? We did use the exclusive tr definition for trapezoid, and we did talk about how if we use the inclusive, the trapezoid would go here and be attached to the parallelogram and the quadrilateral in a straight line. We are not going to answer this question because we drew it with the exclusive definition. And finally, number five, determine whether each statement is always, sometimes, or never true. Use the inclusive, we're actually going to use the exclusive definition for trapezoid. So a square is a parallelogram. That is always true. A trapezoid is a rectangle. That is never true. A pentagon is a parallelogram. <laughs> that is never true. Pentagons have five sides, parallelograms have four. Cannot be true. A trapezoid is a square. That is never true. So you can tear out page 601 and 602 because you will also turn that in on your test day. If y'all have any questions, email me.